How Slab on Ground Foundations Work This video explains how slab on ground foundations work, especially those found in the greater Houston area. Understanding how a slab on ground foundation works is important to homeowners, home buyers, home sellers, real estate agents, and real estate inspectors. To understand how slab on ground foundations work, consider a rectangular slab as seen from above with the house removed. Now imagine that we cut the slab in half along the red line and then look at it from the side as indicated by the black arrow. This is what is called a profile view. Remember, this is what you would see if you were to cut the slab in half and then look at it sideways. The brown area is the ground. Note that the slab foundation sits in and on the ground. Notice also that the top is a thin, flexible plate of concrete. This thin, flexible plate is supported by concrete stiffening beams. In this example, there are five of these stiffening beams. In this view, we are looking again at the slab from above. The blue lines represent the stiffening beams. They crisscross the length and width of the foundation. The stiffening beams are the skeletal structure of the foundation. They are what make the foundation stiff so it can resist the forces imposed on the foundation as the soil below shrinks and swells. Slab foundations are almost always placed on level ground. The soil underneath the slab almost immediately begins to react to the presence of the slab. Moisture in the ground underneath the slab is now trapped by it. It cannot escape by evaporating away. As moisture migrates from lower soil strata to the surface, the water molecules become trapped and attached to the clay particles in the soil. Clay particles are like very thin plates. The water molecules push the plates apart, making it appear that the soil mass is swelling. The soil in the middle area of, of the slab traps more moisture than the soil near the edge of the foundation. This is because the moisture in the soil near the perimeter can migrate to the edge and escape. The result is what starts out as level ground assumes a mound shape as shown. This slide shows how the soil mound grows over time. Eventually the mound will stabilize, but this may take six to seven years. The oval lines in this slide show the soil mound as viewed from above as if we could see through the concrete. The highest point is a small oval in the center and the lowest part of the mound is the largest oval out near the edge. The foundation reacts by also assuming a mound shape as shown by the blue curve. Note that the foundation mound is much shallower than the soil mound. This is due to the presence of the stiffening beams. In this slide, the gray curve is the shape of the soil mound that forms underneath the slab. The blue curve shows how the slab surface reacts by bending. Foundations not only bend, they also tilt as shown by the red curve. When the foundation bends, brittle brick veneer will start to crack. Also the bending foundation will cause the wood frame walls to rack, creating diagonal cracking patterns in the drywall. Door frames will also rack. This results in doors that do not fit squarely and may not latch or even fully close. It is useful to think of the slab foundation as consisting of two areas. The dormant area and the middle area of the slab is the area where moisture in the soil becomes trapped. Absent a plumbing leak or some other unusual source of water, this area will usually become stable or dormant after six to seven years. The area around the perimeter is called the active area since the soil moisture is constantly changing in response to seasonal weather changes. 
In dry periods, the soil underneath the active area shrinks, and in wet periods, it swells. We can think about the life cycle of a slab foundation in the following way. The slab will normally start out flat and level. For the first year or two, the slab will settle as the supporting soil responds to the weight of the foundation and the house. This is called initial settlement. Some damage to the house may result, but it is usually minor. After a couple of years, the initial settlement will stop. Starting as soon as the slab concrete is placed, the supporting soil will begin to form a mound or upside down bowl shape. The height that the mound reaches and how fast it reaches it depends on the engineering characteristics of the soil as well as the moisture condition of the soil at the time the concrete is placed. As the mound begins to form, the foundation reacts by bending and tilting. Most foundations will eventually tilt and will have a shallow upside down bowl shape. The central area becomes dormant after six to seven years. In the short term, the perimeter or active area will fall when the weather is dry and lift up when the weather is wet. In extreme cases, wet weather may make the perimeter lift up enough that the long-term upside-down bowl shape inverts to a shallow right-side-up bowl shape. In extremely dry weather, the upside-down bowl shape can become exaggerated, creating short-term damage. It is during extremely dry weather, and especially droughts, that we see the most foundation problems in Houston. The short-term life cycle creates short-term damage and is cyclical. In a sense, a slab on ground foundation acts as a shock absorber or buffer to reduce the amount of bending in the foundation due to expansive soil movement. This results in less damage to the house, but it does not eliminate it.